it's almost time for me to go to sleep, and I don't know how much sense any of this is going to make, but I'm going to film anyway because I want to. Basically, if you guys haven't been living under a rock, you would know that Ben & Jerry's collabed with Nike to create Chunky Dunks. I'll link the full name in case you actually want to buy them and you haven't heard about them for some reason. And honestly, it's a pretty dope collab. Like, I think the cow print's cool. It's like on trend and like, oh my god. This chair is so squeaky, I'm sorry. It's on trend and it's like kind of the it thing to do cow print. It has like rolling hills and it's a collab with Ben and Jerry's, so you really can't go wrong there. I would say my favorite part's the box. Just me personally, because I don't know. They got pretty creative and they don't really do cool stuff like that anymore. But today I'm gonna try and recreate them. So if you wanna see that, keep on watching. First of all, Ben and Jerry's, iconic ice cream company that has just like done a 180 of with like what an ice cream company can be. They're super involved in social justice movements. They have multiple insane social media campaigns, which you should check, which you should check out. And they just do a good job overall of being like a good company that does good things and is constantly serving their community. But I don't think anybody expected like a collab with Nike of all companies. That is one of the more drastic things that we've seen from them. I think that this collab is just pushing the boundaries of like what we can really make with collabs. And I think we can go even crazier and truly really expand all kinds of cool stuff that we can get out of class because nobody would have ever thought that Nike, a sneaker company, would collab with an ice cream company. But either way, it's cool. It's a cool experience and it's like a super limited drop. So everyone's happy. I feel like we've kind of stopped doing that because companies are very afraid to drop things that don't sell because there's a lot of collabs that flop very often. I can't really name them off the top of my head, but I'll put a bunch of pictures everywhere of what I'm talking about. But if a company isn't at like, they don't read their optics and marketing well enough, they don't know what's going to do well. So it can kind of be a big gamble to do an unusual collab because it's like, on one hand, you could have with something like Ben and & Jerry and Nike collabing, you could have a bunch of people being like, nobody asked for this. Like, nobody asked for this. And the thing is, there is a long list of like Nike collab people are waiting for that we just haven't gotten because it's like, if you do the obvious, it's kind of boring, but it probably will sell well. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't know if anybody wants another Cactus Jack Nike collab. Was that too loud? Oh, my bad. It was just, like, I just personally don't see anybody banging down the Nike headquarters door for another Travis Scott collab. Like we get it, he's like, he sells, he pushes, he pushes product and that's why they keep using him. But everything that's come out so far, after, like there's only so many times you can do an awesome sneaker and it just blow everyone's mind, you know, that's just natural, that's normal, that's not at anyone's fault in the situation. But it was cool to see them do something that nobody was expecting, like collab with an ice cream company of all things. But I think in the future, this is the really the direction that people want to see things go in. We want, we want crazy stuff. We want big productions. We want weird packaging, especially if you're going to charge as much as you do and make the drops as limited as they are. Like, I don't want a standard box with a standard drop that's just like a standard sneaker like make it interesting make it limited and make it just a collectible piece of art that people can hold and have and treasure because nowadays in the world of just hyper consumerism where you can get anything you want whenever you want wherever you want you have to do a lot more footwork to make people care about your stuff than you had to in the past which is why i think this collab a lot of people were saying that they wanted this to be a standard release, like they wanted it to be something you can just go into any store throughout the summer and pick up, like any standard container of Ben & Jerry's. But that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, just because it's like, I don't want, it, it, just, it just lowers the hype factor and makes it less covetable, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I sound like a crazy person, but imagine walking into any Nike store and seeing Ben and Jerry dunks 
every single day it, it just wouldn't be as interesting anymore and then everyone would have them and then they'll start looking ugly because let's be honest it's not like the pretty the prettiest design in the world it looks cool it's supposed to be cool and interesting so if you just do it over and over again and make it a standard drop nobody's gonna care anymore and that's one thing that you have to look out for you need people to care you need people to fight tooth and nail to get your stuff because if they don't they'll just go to another store and that's just the world we live in, the future of sneakers, about the future of marketing, about the future of just the entire ecosystem of like shopping and fashion and shoes and just our entire world because people want exclusive things that are weird and cool because at this point you we know what we like, we know what our favorites are, they're probably already in our closets, we have a wardrobe to go with it so if you're gonna drop stuff and anticipate it make it weird go weird as possible like i want to be very confused when i see your stuff like why can't we get a nike and um what be what would be a weird company um like a nike thomas the train engine collab like i don't know something like that would be funny with the weird faces on the sneakers, why not? Let's do it. Like, we can do it. It would be funny and cool, and it would be interesting, and people would freak out when they see it. They'd get a lot of hate, which, like, just means you're making something cool that's worth buying. Because pe the, the people that, like, talk the most dirt on these collabs literally buy the most basic pairs of shoes anyway, so who cares? Like, who cares if you're gonna charge upwards of $300 for one pair of sneakers, make it weird. I want weird stuff if I'm paying a lot of money for it. It's like now we've gone into the collectible phase of product and boring product is not does not make for a good collectible. It just doesn't anymore. And we've seen that huge campus come up with better stuff. I know Thomas the Train Engine isn't really like the most that's kind of an outlandish place to go. But why not? Like truly, truly we could do, there could be a lot of really cool, awesome, weird stuff that we could get. Like why doesn't, what, it would be really funny if Nike just picked a random like kid on Instagram and made a sneaker based on their feed or their TikTok or their Facebook or their YouTube or whatever and made that a collection, made that a drop. Like that would be funny, it would be weird, it would get people's attention. And it would just be something worth buying into because it's <sighs> now that I filmed way too much footage, let's unveil our mess. So this is my recreation. Feel free to roast it. I give it two out of five stars just because if I really want to go crazy, I could have completely recreated the cow skin effect. But you know what? We're not doing that today. Um, I think it just kind of fits the aesthetic of the sneaker. I think I match the colors pretty pretty well. You're not gonna fool anybody if they saw these on the street. You're not. You're definitely not tricking anybody. But maybe from far away, if you squint, if you squint really hard, you won't be able to tell. <laughs> I'm not gonna close go close up because you guys are gonna start noticing mistakes, and I don't want to be roasting in the comments. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.